I just want to say that I live in Tokyo, so things might be different if you live in any other part of the Japan. The Japan? Did I just say the Japan? Hey guys, it's Mikan, and today I'm basically going to be talking about what it's like to study in Japan. And this might be helpful for people who are considering studying in Japan but they're not sure if they should or they're a little bit nervous about it. Um, first of all, I would like to mention that there's many different ways to study in Japan but the ones that I'm most familiar with and the ones that I've seen the most is A. Doing a year abroad with your university, like in the third or second year, I'm not sure. And then B. Is what I'm doing which is starting with a language school and then I plan on maybe continuing my education in Japan. I just want to say that I live in Tokyo so things might be different if you live in any other part of the Japan. The Japan? Did I just say the Japan? First of all, if you are at a university and you're considering going to Japan for a year abroad, no questions, do it. Like, it's 100% it's worth it and you're only going to be there for one year and you're probably going to have an easy time with workload and you're just going to have fun and it's going to be great. So I do recommend straight off the bat doing that either way. I would like to talk a little bit about what my language school is like and what my experience with language school is like and about preparing for higher education and things like that. So when I first came to the school I was doing the slow course at my language school and it was just like a piece of pie, a piece of cake. So if you are someone who doesn't go to university and you don't really want to continue on to higher education or you are someone who don't mind taking it slow, just doing the whole like full two years slow course you're going to not have much of a problem at all. The problem for me is that I didn't feel like I was moving fast enough. It kind of felt a bit too slow and now when I talk to the people who stayed on the slow course and I hear what they're doing, I'm like, you're not doing anything, you know? But at the same time, it's like I am doing a lot at my course. One point is that the workload, if you are very serious about it, if you want to improve quickly, is a lot. It's a lot. There's just no way around it. I go to school in the morning and then I go to work and then I go home and I just study the whole night and then I go to sleep. And there's just basically not that much room to do other things unless you're someone like my friends. There are many of them who are quite social and they don't mind doing things on weekends and things like that. For me, I've had to stop a lot of the weekend activities because it was just too much for me and my priority had to be the language school. If you want to continue to university like a university university and not like a training college you have to do the EJU and things like that and basically you have to do maths <laughs> which I know, like I sound so weird saying that but I hate math so much and if you have seen the UK GCSE maths you'll know that it's just not the same level at least I don't feel like it was the same level because I'm looking at what they're doing for the entrance exam for university and I'm like I've never looked at this in my life so be aware of that if you are not good at maths because um, in Japan basically it's not about the qualifications that you've got from schools before because in the UK it's like oh I got a B in sociology and uh, this and that whatever and then you use those grades to apply for university and I'm sure it's like that in a lot of countries but in Japan there's an entrance exam which is so much pressure for everyone like for the foreign students for the um, Japanese students it's, it's just a lot of pressure and they're usually around January February ish and that's a lot so if you are someone who is like really worried about workload I'm sorry but it's a lot that you have to work for for me university because of the math thing is just not an option I have to do training college which I don't mind anyway because that's what I want to do but it's just for people who maybe want to do like engineering or something it's like it's gonna be difficult for you unless of course like I'm being so dramatic like maths is the worst and you're gonna die if you come here and you want to do maths like there are probably some people who are like why are you being so dramatic no I'm just really bad at maths like if you're good at maths don't worry about it like it's fine the level you have to be to continue to education is an N2 level in Japanese at least like to enter anything you have to be N2 level so be aware of that especially if you're someone like me who's literally starting at like N5 level like you have to really try hard on it otherwise you can't continue um, but if you are someone who literally just wants to get like a student visa and then you want to just enjoy Japan travel around uh, enjoy the lifestyle then like don't worry about it you're gonna it's fine it's no problem like don't worry about it the main problem is really if you want to take your studies really seriously and if you're really someone who wants to like improve and like it's really important to you you know because um, I feel like a lot of people come for different reasons I originally came thinking I was gonna leave so at first it was a lot easier because I was like oh well whatever I'm gonna leave anyway and then when I was like oh 
oh, I'm staying. It was like, it suddenly like the stress was like, Phew. there was a lot of stress basically. Like it, if you take it seriously, it can be very stressful, but I'm someone who does stress easily. So, and you know, like if you are someone who is generally very good at studying and things like that, then go you, you're going to be fine. <laughs> I'm just talking for people like me <laughs> who are going to struggle a little bit. The thing you have to understand about me is where I was in life when I came to Japan. Um, I was, so basically like I didn't have any real goals. I didn't have any like I didn't know what I wanted to do in life at all like no idea so when I came to Japan I came with like a complete open mind like I'll just see where it takes me kind of thing as I mentioned before I don't have a particularly strong tie to my family of course I do respect them for what they are they're my family but we're not that close so it's not like I'm like oh my gosh I have to go home because that might be difficult for you to stay here for many many years if you are someone who really like wants to be with their family all the time another difficult thing is that it is kind of difficult to do a language school and then continue on to a job it's definitely not impossible it's but it's very stressful because I've seen a lot of people really 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 struggle with that and it just tears them down emotionally because the time is running out and they have to find a job and they have to get a visa sponsor and those things can be really really stressful so bear that in mind but it's definitely not impossible but if you do that make sure that you come here with a bachelor's degree because you can't get a working visa without a bachelor's degree so for me um, continuing straight on to work is just not an option and for people like me it's not an option you do have to continue on to education if you want to continue working here in the future the reason why I stayed in Japan is because I enjoy first of all the atmosphere of the country which is a really strange thing to say but um, I feel like every country has like kind of like its own feeling like I remember I really loved countries like Spain and Greece because they have a really like carefree like kind of feeling and then Japan has this kind of like organized everything's in place kind of feeling and it's kind of reassuring if that makes sense so I definitely enjoy that um, the people are very nice of course there are definitely 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 times where you're like no one sees me as a real person and I'm isolated from the whole world like it does feel like that sometimes absolutely that's normal but I think that's the same if you move to any country that's very different but especially so in Japan just because Japanese people are not as used to foreigners as for example in the UK we see we meet foreigners like every day all the time it's completely normal but in Japan most of the people are Japanese and, and there's this whole like breaking into Japanese culture which might be very difficult and it might be a little bit alienating at first does that make sense am I making sense but there are sometimes we might be like oh my god everyone sees me as this like weird foreigner and no one wants to speak Japanese to me and this and that and it's not true you it's just it happens you go crazy a little bit when you move countries you kind of go through like different stages of being integrated in the country if that makes sense as integrated as you can be in Japan basically so be prepared for that it's going to be very difficult to actually be like I, you know feel like you belong in Japan even I'm still struggling at times it's kind of getting there you know I've only been here a year and a half so I've, I've got a long way to go especially if you're someone like me I'm a European I'm from Sweden and so I'm used to like going to other European countries and not feeling that out of place I don't know is that normal I feel like that's normal for European people right and then for Americans I guess you can just travel around like different American states and then you don't feel like you're like totally like a fish out of water you know but when you're in Japan you feel like you're a fish out of water a lot of the time because people do sometimes look at you and you know like um, if you're not used to that it might be strange because I've always worn like a little bit interesting fashion and stuff so in the UK people would still stare at me and so like I'm kind of used to people staring at me in general because people are just kind of curious about me but if you are not used to people staring at you it might be a little bit difficult so what is life like in Japan life in Japan is first of all very convenient very it's just I feel like it's one of the easier countries to live in once you get a little bit more integrated and of course there are so many difficult things about it especially when you don't speak Japanese and even my Japanese is not at the right level to be like yeah I can do anything I can open bank accounts I can do anything like a lot of the technical things can be very very difficult making friends with Japanese people might help but that's so much easier said than done that's a whole nother situation Japan is fun but Japan is a very very demanding society people work very hard people work very long hours I feel like that's kind of starting to change into the less extreme um, but people do work very very hard they have very very short breaks and if they take a long time off then apparently like their co-workers get a little bit sour with them and that can be really overwhelming especially coming from a country like Sweden or England where like we get a lot of paid time off and we're like encouraged to take our time off apparently in Japan most people don't really take their time off 
just so you know and you, you might look like the bad guy if you end up being the person who takes the time off. I don't want to discourage people, I just want to give a more like realistic view of what it's like in Japan, but it's not all bad. Am I making it sound all bad? I really hope I'm not because I love it here. There's, I would not stay if I didn't love it here, I wouldn't want to continue studying here if I didn't love it here. I do love it here, um, I love Japan, I think it's a great country, I think it's beautiful and I really enjoy the people that I've met and I enjoy everything about living here. It's just that the workload can be a little bit intense if you really want to progress quickly. Because of course you can take it slow but you can only have a two year visa for a language school so you have to improve in those two years. So that can be a lot of pressure especially if you start from basically zero like I did. In general I feel like my life has improved since I moved to Japan. I really like it here. Take that as you will. Basically what I'm trying to say is it's kind of difficult to live in Japan because there's a lot of work that you have to put in but if you're willing to put in that work it's going to be very rewarding, you're going to enjoy it. If you are someone who just wants to enjoy Japan and just wants to travel around and basically just you're not really that bothered about the studying aspect, come, you're gonna have fun, it doesn't matter. If you are someone who wants to continue on to work it is absolutely possible, it's just a little bit stressful but you know you've got this, you can do it. And if you are someone who is on a university course and you can do a year abroad, do it, no questions asked, do it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pretty much it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what else you would like to know about my life in Japan or just like living in Japan in general. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you, bye.